Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Arcadia Roundtable, running at the unusual time of whatever the time is right now on a Wednesday. I mentioned elsewhere that there's been another another last minute change of plan. So this this show was supposed to happen yesterday, um, but neither Chris nor Dodge could make it. Now, if you're really astute and you're looking at the screen right now, you'll notice that uh, that we're down to two. Chris is not here again. It's also actually technically past Dodge's bedtime, but he's um, he's managed to make it live onto the stream for me anyway so Dodge, thank you for that please tell everyone how you're doing no, that's all right mate uh, sorry about yesterday um obviously it's a shame because i couldn't do yesterday because i had to have my creations for my kids um and they wouldn't let me get a word in so i said i can't do it um and then obviously it all got a bit mixed up and then obviously unfortunately for chris with his hospital visits and that it was on one of his days that he, he had uh, he has an early start and he's just beaten from the day so he couldn't be here this way but we thought we'd put a show on a more friendly friendlier time for our colonial cousins so they can uh hopefully join in as well but yeah there might be some yawning because i'm like i'm a pumpkin these days so i'm usually in bed by now watching dragon ball or so you know but yeah yeah we're we'll getting to it it's good we will. And you know what? Normally at this point on a Wednesday, we were on Q&A, so which is more of a like conversation with chat as well. So the fact that there's less of us isn't all bad. We can try and try and interact and get chat going. Gamsley, I see you asking to come on the show and I'm going to decline your kind, going to call it an offer. Um, it's kind of an offer, right? But you've got tomorrow and this show needs to run pretty short because uh, it is past Dodge's bedtime. So it's not threatening. Relax. Enjoy the show with everybody else and we'll have a nice little back and forth dodge let's start like we normally do though tell me what you've been playing i've uh so i was playing dragon's dogma for a bit and then i spoke to the guys in our discord and i, I did a point where the map it was encouraging me to go to a new area and i looked at the quest name and, and spoke about it in our discord and a couple of people said to me who had already beat the game and said if you want to clear anything up now's the time sort of thing and uh so what I did was I went on. You misunderstood the instruction. Away. You went, ah, oh, I do want to, I want to finish Horizon Zero Dawn. So I'm going to clear that out uh, before I do this next nah, mission. I didn't play, I didn't play Horizon. So I, I said, all right, <laughs> sweet. And I come back off of it, did a bit of Final Fantasy 14, got started my addictive tendencies. It started getting the better of me, got up to level 27. And, uh, of that and then i thought oh, i've got to get dragon's dogma done so i think it was monday possibly i i just um got my head down one night it's quite anti-social on the discord and just smashed into it and, and got to the final battle and uh i thought i'll do that the next day and i beat it yesterday um and uh yeah i fuck it i really enjoyed that you know, we was talking in the Discord earlier before we went live, and I said the beauty of games like that. Obviously, it has like slight, slight shortcomings. You know, Gams is in the chat, and I know he gets all defensive, like when you criticise the CPU performance in certain areas because of because of the demands of the game and how brilliant an idea it is. Yeah, but it's just it's just a little bit short in execution. But anyway, um, beautiful games like that is. Every single one of us can have a different story from being in that world, a different encounter, you know, different caves, different, you know, obviously different vocations, different ways. We Like, you know, Dave Mack and, and Chronic found the final battle a lot easier than I did, but they had a different vocation, you know, and that's what I love about games like that is when there's so much variety in it that... It's the same game, it's the same world, but we, me and you could have a completely different experience and stories to tell. And um, I said, I'll, I'll put a tweet out when I beat it. I said, I'll definitely go back because I didn't fully explore the whole map and do every quest. And um, mm -hmm. I found a couple of quests. So I said, I will definitely, it's got replayability for me, trying different vacations. But I will go back, hopefully, when they get a few more patches into it, kind of just cl like clean up a couple of little things and that. But it, like I say, I loved every minute of it. So 
I beat that, and then Horizon Zero Dawn was um, it was just another one that I had a save file on, and I didn't realize you know how what? far into it I was. Wait, because I want to ask oh, you some I, questions about Dragon's Dogma, and then we'll get into the next game that you've been okay. playing. I like talking about the games, okay. and I like to extract a little bit yeah. of what's going on with there. So, Dragon's Dogma 2, you've obviously played it start to finish. Did you yeah. find that? It suffered like any dramatic like rise or fall in difficulty as you went along, or does it stay pretty steady start to finish? Uh, I don't, I don't. To be fair, we are. I think it, it all comes down to your perspective. I think all the tools are there for you. The, the the game is 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 built in a way that if you want to make it easier for you, there are things that you can do to power your level up higher. Yeah, in in all the side quests and the caves and all these varying other areas, even stuff that I might not have found. But um, to be fair, there was an element of just getting it done when I got to the end, and I was just like running. I was just like running to the the quest markers. It was more my mentality at that time was I want to get the game done. But with regards to difficulty scale. The only real rage inducing was the final battle and without going into too much detail, it was like there, there were certain things you were doing whereby if you didn't stop doing it quick enough, you would basically just fall to your death and it was like, that was the one time like I said in the Discord where um, you've seen like mm -hmm. the, the social media, the clips of pawns catching people from ridiculous heights. And, uh, there are I feel lots of porn issues on social media these days. Like, it's not what you're saying whatsoever, but you know, cross that over. I, the reason I ask about the difficulty is because um, I'm still in the first like five hours of it. I'm not managed to go back to it. Really want to. Really love those first five hours. But when I hear other people talking about it that have gone through it, most people aren't very critical whatsoever. But if they are, they mention the performance, which we've like been over, and yeah, then. Yeah. I've seen a couple of people say that the difficulty kind of falls off. It gets a bit easy as you go along. And a couple of people say that it starts to get a bit like repetitive, a bit samey. But these these are people in the minority. And I'm just like digging into someone I trust to find out, like, you know, what you felt in that regard. I think the, I've, again, I'll just go back to what I said. I think the beauty of these games is your playthrough is, is your playthrough. It's dictated by how you want to, how you want to attack the game. You get me? So you'll speak to your man. Yeah, and here, here go. Oh, yeah, it gets a bit samey. Yeah, but it might not feel yeah. samey for you. You know what I mean? So I would employ anyone, yeah, to to play the game. Yeah, play it your way. You know, and if it gets samey for you, then maybe you got to change it up. Do you know what I mean? Because I didn't, I I didn't get. Um, there weren't a point where I was like, oh fucking hell, I got to fight another orc you know what i mean or like another cyclops you know what i mean or mm -hmm. it's that and the other sometimes you can avoid those you, you can go oh, do you know what i don't really fancy it i mean it and then other times you go yeah we'll have a bit of that and you, and you jump in there so i don't I, I i never the difficulty curve in it for me getting easy i wouldn't say for me i felt that it got easier as i progressed i felt a little bit more powerful but then with that power the enemy types got a little bit more and armored. responsibility, it weighs you down, right? All that great power. Yeah. Suddenly you got to look after well, your nano. No, that's actually, I yeah. said that totally like. <laughs> oh, what are you done? Sorry, Dodge. No, Sorry, Dodge. No, um, no, it don't matter. But I know what you're saying. I, I, I would just say, yeah, everyone play the game. Yeah, if you're, if you're into a sandbox, like a world, yeah, that you can get lost in, go go and do whatever you want to do. It's definitely worth checking it out. And like I say, even if you're still sitting on the fence because of the performance issues, the performance issues are isolated in heavy NPC populated areas. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. the majority of your playthrough it won't even really be an issue. You know what I mean? We, we, we even spoke to console uh, Tom and uh, Dave Mack in the Discord, and they're just playing primarily on uh, Xbox. And they're saying, like, they're, they're, because of the issues we notice on the PC, say, are so jarring, because you can be so high and then crash down, whereas on the console experience, they're kind of like just level playing field, you know what I mean? And they're, and they're just mm. going, you know? So, yeah, I, I, it's a great game. I, I enjoyed it, so... So for people watching and wondering why that was awkward for me, um, I was making a terrible Spider-Man reference, right? But I chose Nan, and Dodge's Nan has not been well lately, so this was an awful folks pass, as they say. <laughs> Nobody says I'm aware. Um, 
but we'll move swiftly on from there and carry on with the game so tom's just said in there as well on the um, on the difficulty thing the game doesn't have like enemy scaling some games the enemies level up as you do and it kind of levels out the difficulty deliberately in a way that i don't particularly like but dragon's dogma does let you kind of overpower the enemies if that's how you choose to play which is made yes exactly i love folks pass that's what i said um which is exactly <laughs> i can't i can't i need chris to bail us out and he's not here to do it let's talk about horizon zero door and everybody that is here watching right now though this would normally be q a so so please do yell about the things that you're playing as well because you can tell us about those we haven't had time to play absolutely everything and i know some of you have played most of the games coming out um now, as you mentioned first, actually, before we get to Horizon Zero Dawn, you mentioned Final Fantasy XIV, um, which I've been stuck on a fair amount as well. Not stuck on, um, kind of stuck on. I've played it a lot with my family, and we've got a bunch of people in the Gaming Arcadia Discord that have also got on the game and tried to ride that wave. I haven't actually played with a single one of them yet, which I blame specifically on... Um, on Gamsley because he organized this whole thing and hasn't actually played with any of us yet but um it's happening we're all on Final Fantasy we're all at various levels we're all grinding through it tell me how you found that so far and how far you've got through it so um I remember like you and Gamsley and Replicant and that talking in the discord and uh saying oh you know the first 20 levels is a real grind you know and uh, you know, it's just a bit like shit running about. And and to be fair, like I, I didn't actually mind it, but the reason I didn't mind it was obviously I was button smashing when I was having a conversation with someone. I haven't really followed the story. And then I was just doing the uh, a tune-in or whatever you call it to the crystal. So I was just fast traveling mm -hmm. everywhere and just doing doing it and just getting... Once I found out that the main quests were the, were the most of the XP, that's, I just stuck with that and... and just flew up and then the game really opened up when i started doing the dungeons so once you're allowed to go into a dungeon i think you get a timer is it, is it about 80 minutes or it's something longer than you need yeah, yeah 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 so it gives you so i goes in the dungeon with three um npcs um and the dungeons are like the, the dungeons are fun you know what i mean and then and, and when i'm doing that i'm like this is where i need my mates now because this could be fun mm. You know, doing these dungeons, obviously, I know you're, excuse me, I know you're playing with your family and that, and, and I can see them dungeons being fun, you know, and um, yeah, I, I just uh, very quickly started flying. I've done some of the main quest stuff, you know, like where you'll have a little boss fight and this, that and the other, but I'm not, you know, the outfits are carnage, you know, I can't, uh, can't get a polo shirt and a pair of jeans in that game. Yeah, the, but, uh... All the character creation is really difficult. To, <laughs> oh, you're just going to have to embrace the bunny ears. There's, there's very little. Oh, no. it's like that really powerful, towards. really powerful bit of headwear, but it's like a fucking huge witch's hat, and I'm like, oh, you know. <laughs> but you got, you got, you got to do it, and yeah, you know what I mean. But uh, a strange leather yeah, belt we... that just covers your nipples, yeah. <laughs> yeah and then they're like big five high boots and that you know but it is what it is but yeah um yeah it's all right like do you know what i mean i've never done an mmorpg before you know i like the mm -hmm. idea of it you know um so i've had a little go i've got my ways about me where i could end up fucking losing my life to it you know what i mean but uh Hopefully that don't become a thing. But yeah, it's something that we can have in our community, obviously, and Shrouded is another one, really, that we, we sort of should have a look at at some point mm -hmm. as well, is uh, just games that every now and again we can all just jump in and just have a session, you know? Yeah, and they are quite quite different in Shrouded and Power World as well. Um, we've got these community servers that I really keep intending to go and play, and poor old Saitama. Saitama. So me, you and Chris had a little dabble on in Shrouded. We both logged on once, not even at the same time, just had a little run around, saw a few things, and Saitama got involved and has probably built like a full city by now waiting for us because the the way the server progresses quest he doesn't want to do it until we're on so he's been building us a humble abode that has expanded and expanded and expanded i suspect so at some point we're going to go on to Introuded and actually do it final fantasy though um has a lot of my time the it does force you to do like you might actually prefer world of warcraft if i'm being honest um final fantasy does force you to engage with the kind of stuff that you don't like those quests that are there's an awful lot of like go here deliver this go over there and talk to that person then go over there and talk to that person kind of questing in it that you the cannot XP, avoid 
if the XP reward is like six thousand XP for doing it, I'm alright with that. You know Obviously what I mean? Right. Like, the you don't you don't need yeah, okay, fair enough. You're yeah, if it's then, like just... if if I'm doing that for like three hundred XP, then I'll be like, fucking what am I doing? You know what I mean? But if as long as I'm How rewarded. About 300 XP and a big witch's hat? Keep the witches at and I'll do it for <laughs> 250. <laughs> New World of Warcraft content, so yes, Replicant. What are you going to do, Replicant? You're you're a player of both. Are you going to head on back to WoW when some content drops and go between them? Because you were just saying that you are, you're you addicted to Final Fantasy fourteen in your own words. So yeah. Um, that's that game, though. I love MMOs. Like, it's the genre that has sucked whole years out of my life. But not because I didn't... Like, not because I didn't want to play them they, I had good times on those games and I've avoided them because I tried Final Fantasy 14 like time ago a long time ago more than once and didn't really get along with it but it makes every bit of difference all of the difference to play with a few people so it's much much better now to, to be able to, to go through doing things socially on it uh, Stephen you don't understand how World of Warcraft is still going well um it's going to be going even stronger because they've just today announced that they've re-established so Blizzard and Microsoft have re-established their um their distribution agreement with NetEase in China. So um World of Warcraft numbers always had a like a good number of millions of people playing over there on a very different payment model to what we have over here. But uh yeah, loads of people are going to be back on World of Warcraft and it's going to see huge growth if they choose to present the numbers in that way. Which, you know, whenever they can present numbers in a positive way, you can expect to see something on it. Uh, let's do the next game. We'll go into topics and news and things as we go. And it is going to be a relatively short show because Dodge needs to get his sleep or I'll fall off a roof uh, tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be short. Go on. Yeah, look at you. You say that with your little, like, you're like a toddler. Like, oh, I'm tired. Yeah. We can see it. We can see it. Um, Horizon. I really like Horizon as the suite of PlayStation games go. You've just gone back to Horizon Zero Dawn and been sharing your screenshots of it. Tell me. Tell me more. I'm uh, just like... Well, to be fair, I'm just in this thing at the minute where I've got to start finishing some games up, you know. Uh, obviously, I'm so... Like, you know what I'm like, and I'm very impulsive. Yeah, so we Gamsley... Yeah, no, yeah, no. No, 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 right? But Gamsley... For, for once in a blue moon, decided to show his face in the Discord. And he came in the voice chat and he was talking and I was playing Final Fantasy fourteen. I had a brief conversation with him. Next thing I know, I bought Final Fantasy seven Remake, didn't it, Greg? Um, <laughs> and I thought, I'm just buying games. like, And I'm not finishing games, you know? So with Horizon, obviously uh, Forbidden West now is on the PC. I would like to look at it. Um, so I thought I might as well go, but I've got to, I've got to save, yeah. And I didn't know how far I was in, and I booted it up earlier for the first time for a while. And uh, I'm like two thirds, three quarters of the way through the story. So I thought I'd just push that through and get it done. But just going straight back in that world, um, that's the game that I always say is my first. Like when I got a PC, it was the first game that I booted up. Basically, the first PlayStation banger, yeah. Um, and I booted it up on the PC and. It just draw dropping, and then obviously I've played Death Stranding now and the Decima, and I, 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 like I said it earlier in the Discord, but like the Decima engine for me is like right up there. Like it's the world building in that engine is incredible, you know. And um, so going back to Zero Dawn, which is seven years old now, I think it is, and going back and playing it, it's just like it's so well polished and good looking, you know. Like nothing's perfect within reason, you know what I mean, but seven years old is is incredible you know so i want to I wanna push through that get that done um, and then uh yeah for, forbidden west i've heard is a it's a big leap again like i was talking to luke still a new member in the discord and um mm -hmm. he was saying like the crazy thing is how good zero dawn looks and forbidden west looks even better you know like so kind of curiosity in it you know what i mean like you know i'm gonna end up getting it i might not finish it for about three years but i'll probably end up mm -hmm. getting it you know so that's just that, that's where i'm at at the minute and then uh, i'll probably end up going back to final fantasy 14 on the side and yeah just trying to finish games up you know so days gone, days, ago. Days, yeah, days gone days ago well. no tell me tell me no, I was just going to say to you because I, I keep. I, I said I went through my Steam library earlier about the amount of games like Hogwarts Legacy, all these games that I haven't even touched yet. 
And um, Days Gone is another PlayStation game. Like, I keep forgetting that I've got. And I've heard a lot of people say, like, it's actually a good game. Like, it's a really good game. So, you know, it's another one that I've got to get to as well. I've just got to start getting getting games done, mate, basically. See, I didn't get along with Days Gone nearly so well because the characters irritated me and I couldn't I couldn't stand to listen to them for an entire game. They have silly names and things like that. Um, Real Ridiculous says that buying games is a game itself. And it can be. It can also be <laughs> dangerous. Dangerous little avenue to explore. Um yeah, I've got I've got too many games that I've never even started over the course of many years. But yeah, won't delve into that right now. It's, yeah, it's it's not ideal, really. Still, you know, supporting the industry and all that. Um, yes, it. <laughs> so days gone. Characters annoy me, but Horizon the um, Zero Dawn. I've said loads of times across the channel, but you know, a lot of people are new here, so I'll say again. Zero Dawn when it was announced and it had his robot dinosaurs. I hated everything about the idea. Uh, it seemed to me to be like the imagination of a child would come up with robot dinosaurs. It's not actually actually a cool concept. It's a cool concept that doesn't play out well in any kind of serious world building. So I thought going into it, and I have really low expectations. It's pretty game from the from the off, but I did not expect that actually I'd end up really liking the world that they built and the story that they tell and the reason that they give for there being robot dinosaurs in that world. It became one of my Right. at least within gaming one of my kind of favorite sci-fi settings at least at the time being so i enjoy it and the second one both games have their own like pacing issues second game has an awful lot of um aloy jabber issues she definitely talks too much when she doesn't need to to herself in a way that's like you know the way that playstation games and many other games yeah. try to to lead the player along with clues and hints it is excessive in the second game and like understand people being irritated by that understand people saying that parts of it are boring but they are so so good as well so so good as well so yeah do get through it don't bother with the frozen wilds content it's a bit shite um get straight on to the second game after that well, like the well, ascent you know, oh funny, patrick though, you, mm -hmm. you're funny you saying that frozen uh frozen wilds isn't it? Is it frozen wilds the, the frozen wilds yes i got so eradication i think he said to me that it's really good that expansion so, or good looking. It's not. Right? So it's good stuff. looking. It's not good. So the yeah. it, um, okay. it's more puzzle driven, like really lame puzzles. though. not difficult puzzles, right. just boring. Um, I didn't, I didn't like the frozen whatever it is, but um, looks in there saying that the the Burning Shores DLC for the second game is fantastic, and I've actually not got through that yet. I finished the second game. I've not done the DLC, um, but I've heard only good things about that. So next up. I think I so Patrick's in there with a uh, timely reminder. He's doing some fancy code giveaways over on the Discord server, which Patrick's a legend and is doing this frequently and is always much appreciated around here. But Dice, you're also in the midst of organizing a giveaway of your own. Another yeah. spectacular. Tell people <laughs> what that's all about. No, just um, we're just going to do one a month. Uh, last month was Dragon's Dogma, which Tony unfortunately won. Um, yeah. And this month we're going to do uh, Zal Tales of Kinzera, uh, which, if that's how you pronounce it, I think is launching on the 23rd of April, which I believe is St. George's Day. Well, I don't believe it is. I know it is. But, um, yeah, so, you know, I'll check the day. It's probably going to finish up on the 22nd and we'll just get the big spinny wheel out again and we'll just broadcast it live in Discord and, and we'll pick a winner. So... If you want to get involved, if you're new around here, subscribe to the channel, you know, become a member, um, join our Discord and get involved because it's a good place to be. And that's it. Good. I'm going to talk about what I've been playing because that's that's a thing as well. We're just going to talk about games. I just like talking about games. So this week, I've already mentioned a bit of Final Fantasy XIV. I'm still, in theory, working through Final Fantasy VII and Dragon's Dogma, but not getting as much time as I want on those. But in our multiplayer sessions gonna go hmm Dutch, did you get to join us on any of the chivalry games you didn't did you i've no nah, i've heard chivalry is a good time but i've never actually played it so chivalry is awful yeah. and brilliant at the same time it's really difficult to yeah. play really difficult to play um to me anyway and you can say i'm terrible at games but you'd be wrong i'm actually brilliant at most things chivalry is hard it's uh kind of a medieval battlefield game to some extent 
but um so it's got that kind of like large scale loads and loads of people running around you can play through objectives you can play killer modes and all the rest of it but the melee combat is so clumsy and deliberately clumsy like all physics based and you have this system of um if you're going to be using it's like basic heavy attacks you'll press the button you can hold it down to get a, a bit of a more weight to it but it is based on weight so your character will do the little swing and in the way that you'd expect in like a melee first person game or over the shoulder game and that will do nothing if you want the attack to be effective you have to add that momentum yourself by swinging the camera around like use the weight of the swing so if you're drawing a big like right to left swing with your axe you should be looking up at where it starts and swooping the camera down to swing around and hit people it's really difficult to get the timing right to get the execution right and to not be absolutely pathetic with it especially when your opponent is also playing the same dance of chaos um i'm bad at it i can occasionally land a great jump in overhead skull smash but you come across people that play it regularly and it's that point in the game's life cycle where it has been out for a long time so a lot of the people that you come up against Oh, all right freaking wizards so i'm running around barely able to walk barely able to swing my, my weapon around and i'll be like yeah and they'll duck and dance and pivot underneath and hit me in the achilles with a two-handed battle axe and i was like what? <laughs> no no i can barely control this thing no it's not it's awesome it's it's just chaos it was uh, great fun we had a good time with it. The the swing mechanic it reminds me of like when i was having golf lessons and was told to like go back and then come through and having to do that with the right stick as well obviously it's a cool mechanic to put into a game but i struggle you know i just struggle uh just holding a controller like jim ryan you know let alone having to do <laughs> extra things with it <laughs> no 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 you're gonna play it with us everyone's gonna play it with us because it is it genuinely it was like fun it's just it's very difficult to get remotely good at it um you don't have to swing all of the hits. Yeah, you do to be any good. Episode thirteen, it teaches you that in the tutorial, right? If you just hit without the without momentum and swing, it doesn't doesn't do very much. You do get little stabs, overhead hits as well. So there is a lot more to it, but it's funny. And if you don't know what you're doing, you still get to witness some hilarious murders. Which who doesn't want to witness some hilarious murders? And I've been playing for not for the very first time, but the first time properly, a little bit of Among Us, which is like um, massive cult following for that one. It was a weird one because the game came out and was pretty much dead for like a year or two, and then suddenly absolutely exploded and became a phenomenon with like millions and millions and millions of people playing it. Um, it's obviously died off a bit since then, but it's still still going strong, still getting content, still a well-known little title which i just never really touched and we did we played it on sunday did it go well maybe yeah, i think I'll... it went so yeah it's like um most people probably are vaguely aware of the concept and a whole load of games have copied it since but um you're in a team of however many i think we managed eight or nine people at cap but it can go up to 15 and a certain number of those people are, are going to be secretly um, conspicuous bad guys. So they don't look any different to you. But And if they're good, they don't behave much differently to you. But they're trying to murder you and sabotage the mission while you try and solve a few tasks and get through it. And you have to figure out who that is and all vote as a team and identify the correct people that, that are the saboteurs to get rid of them before the end of the game if you want to win as a survivor. If you are the bad guy, then you have to kill enough people that they, they can't vote you out anymore essentially um I, and i was to be honest disappointed by the chat element of it for the game to be as big as it is i thought it would offer more like um uh, what's that um silly little indie game that we didn't manage to get working where it has proximity chat and it's like it makes the whole experience because company lethal company that's the one that game was made by the silliness of being able to talk to people when you're near them and like using proximity in that way and among us doesn't actually do that you can at various points in its history i was trying to find like mods and things see how you can make it work and there were mods that let you do this but it's a bit ambiguous on whether they still work or not it feels weird that it's missing that to me because it would enhance the game so so much just to be able to talk to people as you're playing and you're and you're near them let them know if you're going to kill them or ask them questions or just like 
shout and see if anyone's near enough to understand the threat rather than like using discord and ruining the concept of the game by being too noisy and letting like a global broadcast just having proximity chat would have been so funny it's not there it might be there, there in among us vr it might be there in among us vr because it's normal for a vr game to have proximity chat so if you've got a quest or steam vr or all the rest of it and you're part of this little community please get among us vr installed because i want to try it and i'm going to need at least at least seven people i would say for that to be a fun time so call to action there don't worry about the like button don't worry about subscribing don't worry about any of that just go and get, get a vr among headset. us vr and a vr headset if you haven't got one yes pete member for nine months thanks to pat for the game code you grabbed postal too um yeah, thank you, Pete, for sustained support. Nine months is a long time. Uh, always, always appreciated every one of those months. And thank you, Patrick, for everything that you're doing. Patrick is like an um, unfortunate ghost because I would like to cross paths with him more, but he doesn't get on until I've gone to sleep most nights. Still a legend. Much, mate. Real happy to have him around doing what he does. Proper legend. Proper legend, yeah. Let's talk about some of the topics, shall we? Because I forgot that we've got some of those. Yeah. Got some of those. We're going to get on, first of all, to Star Wars Outlaw. Pete with a gifted membership as well. Thank you, Pete. <laughs> Chronic's got it. Um, Star Wars Outlaws. Tell me, Dodge, did you see the Ubisoft story trailer reveal that was yesterday? I haven't. No, I actually oh. still haven't watched it yet. I know, but I can. we spoke about it in the Discord. I can understand the gist of it. Um, I'm uh, like with regards to looking forward to the game or not i like i love star wars i love the division um which is massive um massive games uh put the two together and it should be it should be perfect for me do you know what i mean so i'm like i'm really looking forward to the game do you know what i mean i don't know how you how you feel about it but like I can't see how they can get it wrong because the division, whether you whether you like it or not, there's still a player base for that game, and it was quite well received as far as Ubisoft titles go. The second mm -hmm. setting of DC wasn't as loved as New York from the first, but the game at its core is really good. You know, um, I think you know I, I see the outcry earlier. Well, last night we see it where people was like, "Oh my god, they won 120 pound for the ultimate edition," and like, "Yeah, mm. that's Ubisoft." Yeah, but that's Ubisoft. Like, I'm, well, I'm, no, 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 I'm but a... like that's a separate. Like, I don't know how I feel about that, so we'll talk about that separately. Let's talk about the game yeah, we'll first, and then the, the general. Yeah, mm. I'm, I'm seeing it here, and like I said to the boys, you know, it, it, it reminds me a bit of Rogue One, the film, like with uh, Jyn Erso, where she's like just a mercenary type. You know, you could play that type. You could be, a, you could be ending up becoming a bounty hunter. All these questions. Um. But I, th I think the game is going to be great. I, I trust Massive um, with this. And uh, it'll be like an action adventure, cover baits, you know, like cover, shooter. Yeah, I, I can't see how they get this wrong unless they put some very, very, very egregious microtransactions in there at launch. But I don't even think that'll kill it. So for me, the biggest thing working against it, probably, is its familiarity. I, and obviously it's set in the Star Wars world and it's going to be familiar as like set in the Star Wars world but it feels like so much Star Wars that that I would consider slightly a negative but it does look like they've carved out like a little area where there are stories to be told I don't like the stupid creatures wow. why is every Star Wars thing got to have a droid or a stupid creature that looks like that one does um, yeah. like, it's just it's slightly over familiar they always have a companion creature of some kind I'm bored of it stop it now Still, yeah. this game is like various people in chat are saying it is on Snowdrop. It is Ubisoft Massive. They're a very talented studio, and it's bound to look exceptional, especially if you've got that high-end hardware. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. Um, I think Avatar performed pretty nicely on the consoles as well, as the closest example of, of what Ubisoft are doing with that engine. So it's probably going to be a good-looking game wherever you play it. Definitely is capturing that Star Wars feel, which for a lot of people is an important positive. It's not. I'm torn on it. Uh, like it's, they've, but they've picked the right period for me. Like obviously, they are capturing in, the right part the of original, Star Wars. Yes, in the original trilogy, you know, they're they're in and around there. That's the that's the good spot where you want to be. I think if you go in that if you go in that sweet spot 
of the original trilogy, you're going to have a little bit of fan service there straight away, you know, whereas if you go before or after, you know, like Jedi Survivor, you know, it's just before um, and stuff like that. Um, Mm -hmm. But if you go too far before or after, you'll just alienate people, you know. So I think uh, the time period's right. I'll just quickly ace up. I'm going to quickly, I've got to go to the toilet, mate, because I'm getting old. So I'm going to be two seconds, yeah. So I'll let you just talk about the setting, mate. I'll be two seconds. Told you it's past his bedtime. This is this is just how it goes. Um, yeah, no, for me it's weird because uh, which show was it last week? Somebody asked. No, it was I asked the question myself. I'm an idiot. I asked um, people to choose whether they would have sci-fi or high fantasy as their their ideal setting, and I cheated that question and said that Star Wars and Fantasy Star Online, but Star Wars is the ideal game setting because it marries guns and essentially magic and swords, like melee combat all in the same universe with a, like tons of style as well so it's, it's ideal as a setting for games and this should be ideal as a setting for games and i should love everything about this game so it's probably just hit me when i'm feeling negative um because actually it's probably going to be brilliant by the time it comes out i'm not too sure like within the star wars universe the the han solo clone like smuggler character is probably the one that i'm least interested in exploring and that's nothing against like any specifics of this character i'm not one of these weirdos that's posting pictures of the voice actor and getting all upset or whatever but i'm not sure that she's that interesting to me as a character we shall see i wish she didn't have that stupid pet you know i wish she didn't have that stupid pet i'm bored of those stupid big eyed stupid pets and that's my rant over thank you for coming back dodge tell me then so the um 120 quid 120 quid is the price that Ubisoft want for the the top digital edition of this game. Digital edition meaning it comes with nothing tangible. Um, it's still just a license. I think it includes like a DLC or something. But 120 quid is definitely uh, way above the high end that most people are willing to pay for a video game. And some people are upset by that. I don't know if I'm upset by that. I don't know if I'm upset by companies putting out like a very premium stupid priced edition for people that are willing to pay very premium stupid prices whilst not cutting out the people that aren't willing to pay that. I don't think it's necessarily the worst approach to video game pricing and additional monetization. So I'm like I'm torn. But what are your thoughts on it? Dodge oh, Ubisoft, 120 quid, super premium deluxe edition. What's got to be in it? Are you going to buy it? You like spending money. I, yeah, I do. I, you know, but... um. You're, like the thing is, yeah, like Ubisoft have done this before many times, yeah. So if you take arguably their biggest franchise of Assassin's Creed, where there was a big fan base there for those games, who will buy them every time they come out. So like I said, I did a little quick bit of research today about it, and they're still selling you now Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is fat mate. It's, it's got to be over six years old, if not more, yeah. They're still selling that Ultimate Edition on their storefront for £95, yeah? The reason they do it is because people buy it, yeah? And there are people who will buy Valhalla Ultimate Edition because you get a limited, you know, an armour set included in it, which gives you so much buff. People want that, yeah? And whether Mm -hmm. we agree with it being digital or physical or collector's statue or, or anything like that is regardless they've done it they've, they've done it a few times now where they got an ip like star wars this is a seller like it's star wars the time period like we said this is a seller you know whether expectations and and this that and the other that's neither in or there this game will sell it's going to go everywhere and and it will sell so to do the 120 pound carrot that they do every time of oh we're going to give you a limited edition blaster and uh this that and the other yeah there will be mm-hmm. star wars fans that will will pay it you know i don't like i said in my tweet earlier yeah i don't agree with it yeah and even though like you said i, I spend money you know loosely yeah i pro i wouldn't buy the i wouldn't buy the ultimate edition if the included extras were a outfit I, you know, Dragon's Dogma was the same. You could have got a deluxe edition there, and I think you got a couple of um, sort of more cosmetic items. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, things like that. I didn't buy that because it's it's irrelevant to me, you know, like that, that sort of stuff. Um, 
But yeah, I don't agree with it, but they've been doing this for ages. You know, I'm not even sure off memory. Call of Duty, did Call of Duty not do something similar price wise? They ain't a long oh, way I off, mate. Under, I know, yeah. yeah, I know they're over a one. I know for a fact, one that I did come up for, I felt I paid £100 for Diablo 4, um, yeah. the ultimate edition of that. Um, did you do that, that for the three day early access? I think I did it for the three day early access and I think I did it because I think is all the expansions and stuff included in it or, or not the expansions, mm -hmm. but like the seasons thing. And the funniest thing about it, Asa, like we said at the start, didn't even beat the game and I ain't gone back to it. So, you know, they got my money. I, I say it every week on the show, I am the problem with the industry. I am the reason games are £120 because I'm the one who will pay it. Yeah, I'm the reason there's subscription models in, in in gaming and everything because I'm the one who will sign up for one month. Still got Ubisoft Plus, another week on the show, still ain't cancelled it. You know, the, the, these are why these things happen, but I'm not alone. I'm probably in the majority of people with subscription service who let them roll, you know. So it's yeah. not right, but that's why they're here. I'm terrible so with subscriptions. The, um, the, I'm not sure if I'm upset about like the concept because there are people walking around with absurd amounts of disposable income. Um, and if you want to give them a frivolous, stupidly priced edition of the game that doesn't actually take away from people paying the normal price and the normal consumer, I don't actually think that's anywhere close to the worst things the industry is doing in terms of monetization. I'd much rather they, they try and specifically target those wealthy whales and super fans that have got the disposable income to, to try and get a bit of the extra money that we know they obviously want, rather than like try and manipulate more money out of normal people like target those people sure that's fine whereas like the case of diablo where it's three days early access if you pay 100 quid on the spot that actually feels worse to me because that targets normal people that are excited and i'm not sure that what i've seen of the star wars digital stuff does particularly target people that aren't just sitting in a silly amount of money so i don't know not like consumer and corporate practices and ways to make money everyone that knows me knows i'm like deeply uncomfortable with ever trying to get money for anything so it's not that i'm endorsing it and saying it's a good thing it's just not the worst practice or one of the things that i, I feel needs defending against in the industry relative to various other things that are happening more frequently anyway um let me know what you think about that one as well because i'm curious about other people's opinions and if other people actually feel compelled to spend that that sort of money for something that is in that pack that I haven't seen. Um, yeah. Helldivers. Yeah, we played Helldivers as well. And Stephen, you're right, generally. So when I say that about the super whale pricing, I'm not talking about where I'd like to see standard video game prices for normal people. Um, you're right, the Helldivers is a much more palatable price than most games that came out and has done very well for it. We've played a bit of that. You've played a bit of Helldivers, Dodge. I've seen you playing it in Tony's videos. So I don't know if it was this week or last, yeah. but it's more games i like talking about games tell me tell me I how you feel it. about hell divers and if you're likely to revisit yeah. i am i'm very likely but like i so said now but um I, you know as per the way with me obviously oh final fantasy 14 let's have a look and then all of a sudden i'm like fucking wallop straight into that and that's eating that hell divers time you know with a community so you know, me and Eradication are talking about doing Tiny Tina's Underworld or whatever it's called on a, on a co-op playthrough mm -hmm. with, you know, whoever. But Helldivers is so much fun. Like, yeah, you can have a drop if you want. But we, uh, Helldivers, you know, we had me, Tony, Eradication, Satama, Kev, you know, Kev's been about for a while in my circle. You know, he's in the Discord now. He's jumping in, he's getting connected, you know what I mean? And we're all playing games. But hell divers, you know, like uh, what Stephen said there, I think the reason, like the, the the brilliant thing for hell divers was that price point. I think the fact that it wasn't a sixty pound game and it came in the way it did, and then also I, I say it all the time, there the Arrowhead, you know, the team that are marketing that game, you know, keeping it fresh, you know, like when we say about live service games, you know, or like Halo Infinite shortcomings at launch and this that and the other, there has to be a plan. Yeah, and they've got the plan. Like they're saying, well, we, like like you say, they was trying to stop everyone playing the bugs. Apparently, according to eradication, they was they was publicly saying like, you know, no, no, fight the robots. So then, what they did was on the bugs planets, they started putting like these meteor shower or eon shower things, so you couldn't call. So they was making it more difficult to try and cut. But that's what you want as a gamer. You want, <laughs> excuse me, you want that because it keeps it fresh. 
Yeah, and and they're adding things all the time and and stuff like that. And I think the game will it will just continue. Obviously, there'll be a point like where where it will die out a little bit. You you would think, but you know it's got legs to go for ages. You know, and I, I, whenever I play it, I, I I don't think I'll ever play that game on my own. I don't think I'll ever play that. I don't know. Oh, I want to play. I want to play. Once you play in a group, yeah, like Kev. We spoke to Kevin. I was going, who was you playing with before? And he was like, no, no, I was just on my own. Like, you know, just getting... He might, he might want to do it on his own. Like, everyone's different. You know what I mean? Like, but I think once you play it with your pals and some of the laughs of people blowing up, you know, when you're calling a strike in and you can't get mm-hmm. out of there quick enough and everyone goes flying up in the air. Like, once you start building their memories, like, that, that, that's the drug that you go, oh, I've got to go back. Should we go and do another one? Should we go and do this? Oh, do you want to jump on later? You know what I mean? And uh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll rate it. You know, I put a lot of time into it, but every time I've played it, I'll, we're laughing. You know, it's it's good. It's good fun. That's the same for me. I never, I don't play it for like a really long sitting. I just go on and do a couple of drops, and then I've usually had my fill for the evening, and that's fine. But they've done, like you said, a remarkable job with the live service plan because they're not the biggest studio. And you think of, I'm not trying to drag it through the mud because it's been ever so popular to do so but you think of like halo infinite that came out with a massive studio behind it and they took so long to to get up and running with the actual live service plan and the content drops hell divers is a much smaller studio and they're delivering content on a relatively small scale but the little bits that they're adding are typically cool as fuck and just keep people interested and like you don't necessarily need to go back every time they announce on social media that you're going to go and fight the robots now or there's firestorms or something like that but it's enough that you think, oh, yeah, that looks pretty cool. I'm going to go back to that at some point. And when there are people around, you go back to it. And that's that's how it's played out for me, at least. Um, going yeah, by the numbers, the how is, it's played out for a lot of people. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, in this in this time where we see these games come, yeah, and they're like, look at Justice League, yeah? Like, big budget, Warner Brothers, 70 quid or 60 quid, whatever the fucking currency exchange rate is. I ain't got a clue, yeah? But... Yeah, we're coming in. Oh, we're going to give you the Joker. We're going to give you this. We're going to give you that. Blah, 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 blah. And then people going in there and the game's dead. Like, the the, the, the game is dead. There's no real forward thinking it, yeah? But like you say, even just the marketing team staying active on Helldivers, saying we're going to change this, we're going to do that. Just little changes, but they're the little things that make people go, oh, yeah, they're coming. Let's have a go. You know what I mean? Because they keep the game trending. They keep it, topic- they keep it topical, yeah? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they keep it topical, yeah. They keep it trending, and um, because Justice League's like, do you know what I mean? They added the Joker as if it was going to be like the second coming of fucking Jesus, yeah. And it didn't have no uptake, you know what I mean? And and that's the trouble in this day and age. You got to strike when the strike when the iron's hot, you know what I mean? And that's what L divers are doing, and they'll just keep running, you know. So yeah, it's good to see. And you have to say, though, like um, sometimes with live service games, it is lightning in a bottle and the studios don't know that they're going to hit it. And Arrowhead can't have been like they can't have been confident that they were going to hit it. But the plan has been meticulous and the execution has been spot on. So they've just like, even if they, like, just adding a mech, it's not a whole new levels and the things that people were demanding of, of Halo and stuff like you need to do these modes and maps immediately. It's just here's a mech, here's a firestorm, here's here's enough that's interesting and we're going to send you to this place, we're going to keep it on rotation, we're going to try and keep things fresh. And I I must admit, when I first played it, I didn't think it would still be relevant two months later from the amount of stuff that was in there. I go onto it now and it's not that it's packed with loads more stuff than it was before, it's just it's still managing to keep fresh with the bits that they are adding. So fantastic job there, like in that one. The the player retention as well is that obviously... There was a thing going around the other day about fucking our oh, Power World's peak of 2.1 million. And then you go on Steam database and Power World's getting about 100,000 concurrent players, you know. But Hell Divers is like 300,000, pretty much. Like they're give or take, and it's holding that throughout. And that's an achievement in itself, you know. So yeah, it's good. It's good to see. I keep saying mm. it's good to see. I've got to change it up because I'm getting fucking bored of saying it's good to see. I have my own ones where I, I notice myself, like perceive myself repeating yeah, some words too much. I say like too much. Ah, oh, you've done it now. You ruined the whole fucking show. Let's go play Hell Divers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wait, Dodge. What was the next topic? Uh, so, sorry, just apparently episode thirteen said that I sound low, but I mean he might have turned me down purposefully because I hurt his feelings sometimes. <laughs> 
you're not low when like just then when you're I'm saying that low. i'm looking at the audio meter and you're where you need to be okay that's all right he says it sounds better now anyway go on mate next next topic no 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 i asked you you're bringing in the next topic because i've forgotten uh, right, Hell Di not Hell Divers, Hell Blade Two, because that's obviously oh, been spoken yeah. about a bit. I think um, that was was it Wednesday, so it was right after we had our show that that came yeah. about. But we've seen some more Hell Blade Two, so there's been some official previews and a little bit of B-roll footage has, has surfaced on the old internet. Um, so you've seen that by now. Is it amazing? Tell me, Gamsley, you do better tomorrow, sir. We'll be fine. Carry on. Ignore him, Dodge. Ignore him. He's watching the Hellblade footage. I um no, I won't. Sorry. Uh, Hellblade. Um, it looks like obviously what they showed. It looks incredible. It's looked incredible like all eight times we've seen it or whatever. Um, I can't wait. I, like, I can't wait to play it. Um, obviously they've announced this uh 30 FPS on console, which we'll go into a bit further uh, in a bit um but uh yeah like the team there you know I, I would never say that they ain't gonna push you know the boundaries they're gonna they're gonna push it as hard as they can um but yeah i'm i'm, I'm looking forward to it i did watch the what was the other thing they did the other day at university they did some broadcast the, thing, the it? massive okay. three and it was like three hours 15 minutes yeah. you managed to watch much of that yeah i didn't watch that mate but uh yeah, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Obviously, I'll go back to your initial thoughts on it and then we'll we'll chop it up, yeah? No, 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 no. You're going to tell me what you thought of the first Hellblade. First Hellblade? I love the first Hellblade. Why? Uh, just love the setting. Just love the... I like the, the, like the combat. The combat in the game was like, like situational. Do you know what I mean? So it was like... You know, you you played the game. You know what I'm saying. Like it's not free flowing, constant. You'll get to areas. There'll be a little bit of that. Um, for an indie team as well. I mean, who who, who published the the first game? Sony published it on the PlayStation. I think I could be completely wrong on that, but it started life as a PlayStation excuse exclusive for like a year. I don't know if it was published then on PlayStation, but still, re regardless, um. Just a really good looking game. I like the story, I like the dark tones, you know, the mental health uh issues that, that Senor is going through. Um and this, that and the other. Um and it was you know, it was a good game. I was looking forward to the next game, but obviously it was bleeding edge and uh that weren't all that. But um yeah, I, I was a big fan of Hellblade. So I was ready, you know, I've I've mm -hmm. waited, waited long enough. How long has this game been in development for? Seven years or so? Uh, something like that, yeah. Yeah. So we went to the first one. According to according to the little googly search, um, it says that Ninja Theory self-published the first one. So it launched on PC and PlayStation. Gonna... So PlayStation just bought but... the exclusivity, the platform. Like, I'm not sure what the deal is there. To be honest, like what what financial and marketing arrangement they had for the for the original one, but I think it was just one year console exclusive, wasn't it? It was definitely one year console exclusive and obviously a bunch of marketing to go with it. But it was a good game anyway, you know, regardless of the business side, like, you know what I mean? The actual game I, I enjoyed. I think most people, you know, enjoyed it. Uh, one thing I didn't enjoy was that fucking maze, you know, when you get in that cave sort of thing one. and it's all dark. Oh my God, mate. Like, I can't, I can't emphasize enough. How long? I, you know, I was probably in there an hour, but it probably felt like I was in there for like six. Like I was so, like genuinely losing the will to continue with the game, you know? I get exactly where you're coming from on that. I happen to, I burst through that immediately, no errors. And I'm not sure if I had failed in there, I'm not sure how many times I would have gone back. There's a section oh. in, um, in the first Hellblade for those that haven't played it. It's not spoilers. It's just like a section of the gameplay where you, you your sight is gone, basically. It's complete darkness bar one or two torches, and it's um, it's using the binaural yeah. audio. There is a threat in the darkness with you that you have to navigate around just by sound. Um, and it is not, it's not pleasant. Someone argued oh. with me. I said on Saturday, like, that game wasn't fun. It was brilliant, but fun's not the word that I used to describe it. Oh. Um, 
It, and I, I it's stand by that. It's not it? it is an the word for it is an inexperience. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. it's a good, it's a great story. I think they do a good job. And like I say, you know, we said about length. You know, when they said about it's going to be a similar length to the first game. Obviously, at first, I was a bit jarred by it because obviously, like all of the podcasts you listen to, everyone expects Microsoft money massively expanded. Uh, but they said, no, fuck that. We we want our story. You know, we want our short our short gameplay. Um, you know, and obviously on the strength of the first game, who am I to go, no, you're wrong. You know what I mean? So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. And I'm really, really glad that Microsoft aren't stepping in there and saying, actually, you need to you need to marvel this up and make this a competitor with the cinematic action games or whatever. I'm just like, because... Um, a lot of people wanted them to. Like you just said, there's an expectation. Like you're Microsoft, you've got all the money, you make this the biggest, most AAA blockbuster game that anyone's ever seen. And they didn't. They said make it a sequel to Hellblade. Or Ninja Theory wanted to make it a sequel to Hellblade. They wanted to continue with what they had started and give the same kind of tone, the same kind of delivery, and just step it up a notch. And they've been supported in doing that, which you wouldn't expect because the first game was... A lot of people don't like the first game because it's not... It's not blockbuster. It's not fun. Um, so very, very pleased because the like, like worst case scenario for me would be that Microsoft did buy up all of these studios and did push them all towards that blockbuster. I mean, the industry doesn't need more of that. It needs more of Hellblade. It needs more of yeah. like diverse projects, different sizes, different scopes, and actual creative ambition rather than just sales ambition, which is surely what this one is. So happy with that. We've got four questions lined up for us. Um, If you are wanting your questions answered, stick them in there in the Q&A box on YouTube. We've always got the Discord server as well. So stick the questions around and we'll we'll get to those shortly. Um, Anything else that you want to say about Hellblade? Obviously the Unreal Engine, you know, the disappointment around the frame rate. I mean, we we can sit here and... We can, like some people in the chat, go, oh, it's a bit of a non-issue, 30 frames, you know. Like, it is a bit of a non-issue for Unreal, Unreal Engine, you know. But they've had they've had a long time. It's a short experience. And the PC, you know, like, I listened to Rand, Rand L4 the other day, you know, and he said Ninja Fury come out and said, like, this is our creative vision. This is how we foresee the game, you know, at 30 FPS. But then why ain't it 30 FPS on a PC? You know, and it's like, you know, Xbox have got a lot of games being developed right now, and UE5, you know, and is it a UE5 thing? Yeah. Uh, uh, Well, obviously, we know it's a UE5 thing because UE5 is very demanding. Yeah. Like you said. Yeah. But is it a UE5? No, no, no. Don't put that word in my mouth. No, you said no, (laughs) not demanding. But the the feature sets in there that they can implement. Yeah. And and the suite of features. Yeah. Can make it even more so. Right. So just Mm -hmm. putting that right. Yeah. But then also, like, is it is it a Series S problem as well? Because, again, you don't think it is. Because I don't understand why they don't. Dan, well, obviously now we're seeing what was it today? Nine hundred p res or something in the game. I've not seen that. It was nine hundred and something. I've not watched it. I'm yeah, not I sure mean, what it was taken like, from either. But we'll have, like, no, we'll have to just wait. Obviously, I'll, I'll be playing yeah. it on a PC, so I, I'd like to think I'd be getting north of uh, sixty. You know what I mean? But um, UE five. You know, what, what are your thoughts? You're a bit more tech savvy than me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, what do you think going for? If the rest of this generation, you, you, Unreal Engine 5 is going to be the driving force engine for game developers going forward, are we just still sitting on a 30 FPS console gen then? Right. Good questions. Um, let's get into each of those. So, Hellblade, first of all, um, I think that when they came out and packaged it up with the the marketing line around it being a cinematic experience and it's better that way, they're shooting themselves in the foot horribly because we know that messaging and it doesn't fly. Um, I say I'd, like it's bad messaging because it implies that they're trying to pull the wool over your eyes and make you believe that thirty frames per second is is better than any other number for reasons for, for for cinematic and that's simply not true like nothing will be taken away from this game by running at a higher frame rate so they cannot deliver that message in that way or in a way that people could even possibly interpret that that's what they're trying to say saying that the game being 30 frames per second on the xbox series consoles i think is the 
correct target for that game. I think um, that is the best use of that hardware for the vision that they're trying to deliver. And that's not to say that 30 frames per second is better than 60, it's to say that it is the best use of the hardware. So the things that they are delivering at 30 are like reasonable. The trade-off is reasonable to make it look like that because the, the atmosphere and vision in that game is it's paramount to the experience. Like that's what it is. That that is Hellblade. It is not an action game. It is not smooth combat. It is all about the atmosphere. And if they feel creatively that what they can deliver at 60 frames per second on the Xbox Series console loses like any hint of that atmosphere, then it's reasonable that they shoot for 30. I don't think it's going to be horrific. I think um, they know exactly what they're doing and what they're the way they're going to try and deliver that. I could be wrong, right? I could play this game, play at 30 and go, no, actually, you, you've not nailed this at all. This looks and feels horrible. I'm not enjoying the experience. But from what I've seen of trailers and things and the, the camera work that we've seen in those trailers, I do not think that 30 is going to be a big problem for this game. And that, at the very least, I'm willing to, to actually play it and see. In terms of Unreal Engine and the generation and whether it is now a 30 frames per second generation altogether, I don't personally believe that it is. Um, like you said about the Unreal Engine 5 there being really demanding, and I said, oh, don't put those words in my mouth. I hear that an awful lot. It is the sentiment that goes around is that it is really demanding. And it can be, but Unreal Engine 5 can also do everything Unreal Engine 4 does. It can be as demanding as prior versions if you choose not to use the, um, the really new high-end feature sets. And you look at something like Gears of War 5, right, on the Xbox Series consoles, game is freaking gorgeous. You can make good looking performance games on these consoles. And I, I think sincerely, a lot of developers going forward for the rest of this generation are going to make different decisions to Ninja Theory and are going to deliver games at 60 frames per second because that's important to the feel of the games that they're delivering. So maybe they won't have Nanite and Lumen and MetaHuman and everything all singing and all dancing all at the same time. But those things aren't essential to make a good looking game. We've seen plenty of games that are good looking. And I think for a lot of developers, they're going to make those decisions. They're going to weigh it up. They're going to go, actually, this is more important for the game that we're making. We want it to feel good. And I think we'll see a lot of 60 frames per second games until this generation is done. We'll see some 30 frames per second games as well. Of course we will. That was always going to be the way. Um, that's my thoughts on Unreal Engine 5. I just, I, I obviously, like, that, that makes absolute sense to me. I'm just, like, obviously, leave from migraine in the chat there is just put in the chat, he, he don't mind 30 frames a second now. And I just want to know the mindset of the people who got told this thing, for example, one of the marketing terms were this monster eats monsters for breakfast. And now all of a sudden it's like four years later and it's like, I'm all right with 30. You know what I mean? Like, what, are you okay with 30 because it is 30? Or will you be okay with 30 because, say, for example, UE5, they implement some of these features and end up giving you 30 because Redfall was 30, even though the game was trash. Starfield was 30. Yeah. I know I sound like I'm just doing the Xbox games, but obviously they are a thing. Yeah. They kind of, but obviously Starfield, they are relevant I can see as well. And, like, the and Starfield, Microsoft obviously, I don't, I, yeah, Starfield had a lot going on. Yeah. But what I'm saying to you is, when you went and bought your console, if you're a console gamer, yeah, did you go, yeah, oh, I've got this now, like, this is it, we're here, next gen, yeah, and then you're getting 30 FPS, and then you're going, I'm all right with 30, like, but are you? You know what I mean? Because I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be okay constantly getting 30. In regards to Hellblade 2, it is a cinematic experience, yeah, like you said to you, they care more about the atmosphere and the visual than they probably do the gameplay. Obviously, they'll make sure the gameplay is tight, yeah, but it's the overall experience, you know what I'm saying? But I just want to understand, are we okay with 30 again across the board, you know, because I weren't okay That's... with 30 for Starfield. There's not going to be a blanket answer for that, though. Like, my wife was playing Power World on the Xbox One X, so the previous generation, Xbox One X, and that thing was running at about 8 frames per second. And I didn't, I, like, she didn't mind. I was looking at it like, oh, I'm actually a bit uncomfortable just watching you play this game. But, but she didn't care. She was yeah. she was happily playing. She didn't even perceive yeah, that this was a low world, frame rate game. Power, power no, no, no. Yeah, but I'm talking about different world. people's perception of frame rates because that game does nothing. Does, it does nothing no. to mitigate that frame rate, right? It is just for me, it is uncomfortable. But different people perceive not... things very differently. So I can play games at 30. I played Spider-Man voluntarily at 30 frames per second on the PlayStation 5. 
the the 60 frames per second mode is is competent in that game and spider-man 2 as well but for me i i looked at both of those modes and i went yeah actually they handle motion blur really well the way the combat works in spider-man it's um the way that it's like does a lot of the work for you it's very much you're, you're playing a timing game and it, it's not twitch in any any regard so i chose to play spider-man at 30 but i do adjust to these things reasonably well some people just don't seem to some people are really sensitive to it and that is kind of personal and if you are sitting there and you're going actually hellblade 2 at 30 frames per second is going to be an uncomfortable experience for me i mean i'm surprised you're a gamer at all because you would have had a terrible time on the last generation on consoles but if that is you i believe you like you're a real person and i'm don't know what to tell you hopefully hopefully it'll be smooth enough if it's not it's not play something else um but go on dodge no, no, it was literally, it's not attacking anyone. I'm just saying that. Obviously, I don't own a console anymore because I made the switch to PC because I only have a limited amount of time to game and I invested it into the PC, yeah? But I'm just saying, in our chat, yeah, we've got console gamers, yeah? And I see a comment saying, I'm okay with 30. I would just want to know, when you went out and bought your Series Xs, for example, did you think that you were going to be okay with 30 because you've had three games now come out of 30 the last three have come out of 30. redfall listen redfall's carnage yeah i shouldn't even bring redfall up because that fucking should never have seen the light of day in the state that it was in yeah and starfield had a lot of gear going on in it but you know they could have scaled a lot of that back you know to inform performance you know what I mean? there's a lot of dwarf like it's a lot of dead planets you know <laughs> like let's have it right it's mm-hmm. a, a vast solar system of nothing going on you know um but like i say when the mindset shifts you know power your dreams and it's like oh we're here now it's party time and then it's like i'm okay with 30. you know it's like come on what's happening but, for um, me for my anyway. taste and my eyes you're right like redfall and starfield i wouldn't cut the same slack for when i say that i think ninja theory have made the correct like decisions yeah, yeah, yeah. on how best to use the xbox series hardware i would not offer that same courtesy as it were to um starfield and redfall because i don't think either of those games made the correct decisions like they, they no. much as i don't want to like kick into these games more than necessary Starfield should have had a performance mode they should have scaled back the there's some dis- like discussion and unknown on whether it is all of these objects and potatoes bogging down the cpu or whether it is the lighting engine on the gpu i think both things are true and i think both things could have been scaled back it would have been worth scaling them back to deliver 60 on that game because the best way to play it is as a first person shooter and it wasn't that comfortable at 30 for me um and redfall i mean redfall is entirely a first person shooter so they should have been aiming for 60 all along if at all possible we know they did it eventually so it just launched in a sorry state on that one still still yeah we'll see what it's like when it comes out i think i think a lot of people are are gonna play it on console and, and actually find it pleasantly comfortable tony mentioned their um like they've only shown like walking and controlled camera like scenes to make it look good so far that's true tony but that is most of the game that is most of the game so that's what i mean when i say i think because the camera work is so restrictive because you're not really panning it most of the time because i don't think they even necessarily give you full control while you're walking or at least don't let you move it at an uncomfortable pace so we shall see how that gameplay breaks down and how comfortable or uncomfortable it is lethal migraine sony uses old engines so high frames is easier that's what i mean on unreal engine 5 though it's a new engine but you can make that thing run 60 frames per second on a mobile if you pick and choose the features that you're using so it's not so much the age of the engine and engines shouldn't get less performant over time but for the fact that they're adding fancy new bells and whistles um when the, uh, which are optional weren't, weren't starfield on uh, creation 2.0 when that the brand new engine yep oh that's funny um yeah so anyway um listen like I, i'm just saying my, my thing is not a, an individual i'm just saying the mindset of a console user is power your dreams here and then a few years later i'm okay with 30. you know i think like, um, there's a really important yeah. distinction though between console user and twitter user I don't know. I'm just talking. I'm engaging <laughs> with the chat. Don't. I, okay. I don't. I don't. I don't play on them Twitter streets anymore. Yeah. There's too many emotional mm. men, children on there. I don't. I don't do that. Okay. I don't. Okay. I, cool. I, I promise you, I don't. For the good of the channel, I don't go there. 
anymore and argue with people. Apart from Gamsley, because his banter <laughs> is fucking shit. But he, uh, yeah, yeah, he likes to the 30 FPS conversation about consoles, and he brings up Steam Deck all the time. It seems like it's his get out of jail card. Uh, it's crazy. But anyway, <laughs> right? Do you know what? Um, we're going to do all of the questions next, I think, because I can't remember any of the formal topics we had. I think we did have a few more lined up, and if they come back to me, then we'll, we'll get to them. Um, if anyone wants to shout them out, then by all means do. But what we'll do is we'll make sure we get all of the questions, and that'll probably take us up to time anyway. So, Isla, if you're there, oh, she's already done it. It's a question from Gamsley for Dodge. Are you going to replay it on the Steam Deck, Dodge? What What replay what? Dragon's Dogma? Ex what Gamsley struggles I to understand is <laughs> I've got a I've got a gaming PC here, yeah. And if I play Dragon's Dogma on my PC and it crashes down to 30 FPS in Firmworth, the fact that he can play out on his Lenovo Legion, yeah, it doesn't make him any better than me. Yeah. So why would I replay out on the Steam Deck when it's not supported? This is what I'm saying with this guy, he's he's, he's not got a clue what's going on. But, do you uh, like no, to play on the Steam Deck? Do you play big AAA games on it? Like if they do run. No, literally, like I had Potato for a little while, and to be fair, your games did turn me off that game. The amount he bangs on about <laughs> that game. Now I'm never going to play that again. Um, I was playing. Um, well, I got Midnight Suns the other day because obviously Cognito, and I'd seen a few people when it released and and, and were bigging it up. Bellatro was another one, but because of Bellatro. I got Midnight Suns because it's a card-based game, but I didn't realise it's got like a full-blown uh, cinematic, you know, story that goes with it, and you have a little bit of third-person control, you know, navigating and this, that, and the other. Um, yeah, but like the Steam Deck is purely, I'm getting a train into London, you know, it's an hour. I play a game. I play Palatro. I play a bit of Midnight Suns. You know what I mean? Or something like that. I booted Death Stranding up on it because I was pushing to the end and I was at work and I did it on there. And let's put it this way. Yeah. Once you're playing on here, I've had the conversation tonight about 30 FPS and console. There's a reason I don't own a console anymore. It's because I prefer high performance. Yeah. So I have a Steam Deck for my convenience. If I want the best I can get, it's it's on here so yeah steam deck's a great bit of kit i actually really hope i said it the other day in the discord i really hope the xbox handheld's a thing i really do because I, I might have to dabble <laughs> fair enough um uh, 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 uh. okay so xbox this is the next question this is from replicant related to what we were just talking about so xbox is too comfortable Releasing 30 frames per second first party games, Redfall, Starfield, and Hellblade 2. Unlike Sony, always including a variety of performance options, including 60 frames per second and ray tracing. Xbox needs to improve. Thoughts. So we have largely talked about most of that already, but um, do you think that this is this problem is perceived outside of Twitter circles? Do you think Microsoft actually have a problem that they need to address, or can they just carry on with 30 frames per second forevermore? Like, what's what's the damage? I, uh, we, we spoke about this again in this call. I know that's another line that I keep saying, but I'm not actually getting sick of saying that one because we've got a good community over there. It's not just people sharing their videos, you know. Um, the, I think this is a problem, mate. You know, I've said it in there. You know, Sony. You know, they they got their fucking shortcomings, you know what I mean? But quality control at Sony, you know. When, when was the last product that they released that was a Redfall? Like, what was it? Like, because it's not been for a bit, you know. Whether you want to argue about Horizon Forbidden West and the longevity of the game or if it kept you engrossed or this, that and the other, it was a polished product. Yeah, whether you like the questing in the game, whether you like the narrative in the game, it was a quality product. Yeah, Xbox, you know, to come out. Listen, I will get it. Yeah, we 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 bought Zenimax for eight billion. Yeah, they should be able to self-operate, and absolutely they should. Yeah, but if you're buying them to be associated to your brand, that's already not this knees. Yeah, but. You know, like at the end of the day, I know Lethal Migraine's going to come in with the old Microsoft financials in a minute, but in the grand scheme of things, they're trying to build the brand and the rapport with everyone, yeah? 
you got to get on top of that shit. you got to make sure that if that game's coming out in your subscription service and, and on your first party to your fan base and this, that, and the other, there's got to be a little, little, like, a little bit of quality control. You know, not like, oh, we should have gone over there and had a look, really. You know, that's a piss poor excuse. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So I feel like, listen, we've said about Hellblade. Yeah, we've had the Hellblade conversation now. It's a cinematic, yeah, atmospheric experience. Yeah. 30 FPS on the console, they'll be fine. Alan Wake probably played at 30 FPS on console. Wouldn't have wouldn't have affected that game as far as I'm concerned, because again, it's an experience, right? But when the fables come, yeah, and when the perfect darks come, yeah, obviously fables on Forza Tech, yeah, but fables gonna uh, fables on Forza Tech. Perfect Dark's on Unreal, State of Decay 3, Unreal 5. When these games come, yeah, if they all start coming in at 30 FPS, yeah, and they've got issues, yeah, you know, when, they've got to do something. Because like you say, Replicant said it there a little while ago. I know Lethal said that, it's, you know, they work with old engines. But Sony makes sure there is a quality in a performance mode, you know, or somewhere in between. Yeah, and it's a quality product. And, you know, whether you like it or not, they deliver. They do deliver. You know, Xbox ain't quite delivering at the minute. You know, the, the Halo Infinite, I said this before a few weeks back, Halo Infinite was going to be the banger. We're back. Yeah, Halo Infinite. Just didn't happen. It was a good game. I didn't mind Halo Infinite story, you know, and I'm not a big Halo guy, you know. But Starfield, 30 FPS, you know, they've always got, something that lets them down to have an absolute banger like hellblade obviously like we said we've discussed it as rational human beings about it being 30 and that'd be fine and that's why it's been lauded up in the previews even though they've played it at 30 you know uh and the game will be reviewed well but it's it's going forward they've got to they've got to make sure that xbox is you're getting quality products otherwise what's the point of game pass you know but that's my run you get me on an xbox run every week and it all comes out of me again (laughs) <laughs> um yeah no i'm not trying to the only thing on that you were talking about sony's quality control and all the rest of it there are pros and cons to sony's approach though because they do receive a fair amount of criticism for the fact that there is like a lot of similarities between a lot of their games they do push because of the state of the industry they, they do push low risk quite a lot so on yeah like phil spencer was saying a while ago and i'm not one of these people that hangs on his every word but one thing they said that that i did kind of approve of was he was saying that you should have some games that don't land very well. If you don't have any games that aren't landing very well, it kind of indicates that you're you're not taking any risk. You're not like trying to be diverse with what you're launching. You're not. And there's there's somewhere in between. There's there's truth to both approaches. Because yes, Sony obviously do focus on quality control, but they also don't have a massive like diverse portfolio. And Microsoft people used to say like um, they're too controlling. And the, the problem used to be like in the like tail end of the 360 people were critical because microsoft are too controlling they only let their studios do forza halo and gears they don't give them any freedom too controlling need to give them creative freedom need to step back and let their studios breathe microsoft have stepped back and let their studios breathe and they kind of fired at the same time um and the air's got all nasty and it's it's a delicate one because microsoft have a lot of studios and some of them are going to need different levels of care and attention to others some of them are very competent very capable and don't need microsoft to step in and start telling them to like dictating how their game should should look and perform and what they should be targeting. Whereas other ones clearly do need, they do need that support. So it's a difficult thing to manage. I do kind of sympathize with them in that sense. But to answer your question, Replicant, like the only thing that's going to stop the noise from spreading and the negativity from spreading is these games hitting and doing well. Is 60 frames per second important for it doing well? Arguably, yes, because games that 60 do feel good. So... We shall see what happens going forwards. Um, let's have the next one, please. I said that too often. Like we'll wait and see. Of course we will. Duh. That's how the passage of time works. Stop saying it, dickhead. Good to um, see. Gamsley has asked us via the Discord. Do you think there's any chance for Star Wars Outlaws to hit the same level as the Jedi games? What about the game gets you most hyped? There's so many Jedi games, Gamsley. I'm going to assume you're talking about EA's Jedi Survivor and Fallen Order games, but if that's not the correct Jedi games, then then say so. Oh, did you like the EA's Jedi games? Well, funnily enough, on that 
wonderful list of Steam library that I've got. I have got Jedi Survivor to play, uh, but I played Fallen Order and beat it, and then I really rated it, you know, um, I was saying Eradication, you know, when I played, because of the Disney acquisition of, you know, the Star Wars IP and that now, you know, some bits are before, some bits are after, and I start losing track of the time zone that I'm in, like in the period mm -hmm. of time that I'm in, and the ending of Fallen Order, where obviously, without going into it, matey turns up and starts chasing you, and it's just like, it's really good, really good game, I enjoyed it. Um, good question, Gamsley. Uh, I'm um same level, I feel like Outlaws might be a different level not better or worse like but it's going to be a kind of different type of game if they support it in the way that they did with the division and it has a longevity and a roadmap and stuff like that um then it can be different but it depends want, whether uh, or not do you want outlaws to I be was. like a live service yeah oh yeah if it's done correctly i would absolutely if it's done like the division and there's regular content drops and uh and like a dark zone equivalent like you know where you can go in there a little bit of pvp um and stuff like that all that stuff like that's what they do like that, that's massive you know that, that that's what they excel in so oh, listen it don't have to be that you know if the agreement is it's just an action adventure game campaign yeah with massive mechanics building it out that'd be fine yeah but um jedi respawns jedi games are, they're a little bit like souls like they're not <laughs> oh god i'll just see um i don't worry i'll just see saying gamsy posted on twitter it's awful i um yeah but they're like they're sort of souls likey like light like souls light you know because uh it's all building and this that and the other but this shooter i, th I think this is I think this is going to be a good game. I think Ubisoft, you know, Chris has said it on air before, you know, they build a world out, Ubisoft. You know, they are great at creating a world and hopefully Massive will be great at putting the content in the world and it all come together. So I reckon it I reckon it'd be, it would definitely be one of the more successful Star Wars games, I reckon. It does. I mean, it's a different kind of, a different entity to those though, because those were relatively small. They have the Star Wars IP and they have some budget behind them, but as a Star Wars game goes, they were actually relatively small, relatively tidy. This is a Ubisoft, like all studios on deck kind of big project that looks, I would say more polished, but more like inflated, if that makes sense as well. Um, so like if it lands it could be a fan favorite for freaking ages and the the jedi games i quite liked the first one the i can't actually remember the order fallen order was first wasn't it fallen order yeah and i played through that through its entirety You're right it was a souls light it had it's like the second one as it as well it's the little uh, replica bonfire system where you meditate and all of that stuff and the respawning enemies and all the things like that but it didn't have the difficulty of a souls like um it had a weird level structure it had things like that that I wasn't keen on. I tried to play the second one. Um, I played on the PC, and that game doesn't perform nicely on PC. Um, like not nearly as nicely as it should, even to this day. So I actually parked that one and figured I'd come back to it at some point when it was going to run all bells and whistles um, for me, which it, it simply doesn't. Performance is a little bit all over the place. Good one moment and horrible the next. So I haven't actually got through that one, which means I'm not qualified to answer. I think... Um, I think there's a fair chance that Ubisoft are going to over deliver on this one, honestly, because they are a good studio. Um, also, Gamsley, also, what are your updated feelings on Final Fantasy 14? So, over the course of this show, does we've been talking for like 90 minutes almost. I know how you felt about Final Fantasy 14 at the start of the show. How do you feel about it now? I feel alright. <laughs> yeah, me too. I feel I feel all right, Gamsy. I feel if you keep bringing it up, I'm not going to feel all right about it. So stop bringing it up and let us just enjoy it. You're suffocating us, Gamsy. <laughs> yeah, fair. Um, fair. Let's have the next one, please. I'm sure that Gamsy asked that before we started the show, but yes. Tony, Tony, cancel Q and Acer again, and I will tell everyone on Discord your fears. You don't know all of my fears, Tony. 
I'm going to get ahead of this. Tony is trying to blackmail me. He's trying to extort. He's trying to stop me from ever cancelling Q&A so again. I have actually learned a valuable lesson that people like that show and I shouldn't cancel it. So you're okay, Tony. But just in case, I'm going to get ahead of you. My biggest fear is being stabbed in the eyes. So the internet now knows. That's funny. That's quite, quite poignant. That's, that's, that's quite you poignant, just think obviously. Stabbed in the with, eyes. Uh, no, 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 no. No, I was just thinking with the uh, Dead Space 2 and uh, Motive Studio. That's been shelved now, the remake. Hasn't. Which is absolutely hasn't. fucked me up. No, it hasn't. Well, it so calm yourself down. No, this is good news for you because EA have come out and clarified that that rumor is nonsense. So EA have come out and just absolutely fucking napalm flame Jeff Grubbs. EA little... came out. I can't remember who they spoke to. They said, we don't normally comment on rumors and speculation, but that one is flat out wrong. Right, well... I, I'm happy about that because I, I literally saw it, you know, this evening after work and I see the rumour was that it was shelved and they were working on Iron Man only and then being support with Battlefield. Um, and I thought, fuck's sake, because the rumour was that they weren't happy with sales expectations again, you know. So, yeah, I'm happy, especially it being Dead Space 2, because in my opinion, one and two of the products anyway. If, um, if that story had, like panned out if the rumor had been true and they had shut that like moved that studio on to, to battlefield night man and all the rest of it it's a very believable theory because it's just it just lines up with what activision did with call of duty and like the machine and putting all yeah. their studios on it taking away games that people loved because these ones make more money so you could totally look at ea and say well yeah that's expected behavior and it's really disappointing but they have come out and said no that's not what's happening so hopefully hopefully there's truth to that and that is in the works because a lot yeah. of people enjoy that. A lot of people enjoy the the new shift then, in EA to, to deliver can, uh, single player games. <laughs> we, we can all get stabbed in the eyes in the remake. You know, I'm not actually that bothered if my video game character gets stabbed in the eye. I mean, like my real eyeballs is the fear. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Have you got issues? Which I think is pretty rational. I've not got no. Bam, no. I haven't got a history of that, and I hope I've not got a future of that. But once again, we'll see. See what the future brings, eh? Uh, let's have the next question, if there are any more. Now that I've got control of this situation, control of Tony. You won't see if you get stabbed in the eyes. That is a very good point. I don't know. I don't know. I've used the wrong words there. Right, Ali Thompson, XSX asked, Games from the last gen looked great. Why not make games the same at 30 frames per second? Oh. And then do FPS boost to 60. They'll literally, they've done that and they were getting some to 120 frames per second as well, which is like when I use Gears of War 5 as an example, Gears 5 as an example, if you go and play that on the Series X, it's locked 60 frames per second and it looks every bit as good as most modern games. It's why the Coalition cannot deliver a 30 frames per second Gears 6 because um, if you take Gears 5 visually and the feel of it, Anything that they do with Nanite and Lumin and all of these fancy tools in um, in Unreal Engine 5 are not going to compensate. They're not going to deliver enough over and above the visuals that we've already got in that game that people will accept the rough feel of it. Um, so you're right, Ali Thompson. Basically, yeah, they don't need to use every single feature going in Unreal Engine 5. We've got good-looking games without Nanite, without Lumen. If that's what it takes, do that again. Um, give us games that feel good as well wherever that fits Dodge give me a really good looking game uh, Alan Wake 2 oh uh, it's, oh fuck knows mate I, I don't know what on a console yeah I'll just go sure. with whatever you said Gears 5 you're quite you're I'm quite happy playing the Horizon games alright they look good yeah yeah I'll, there's I'll, no ray I'll tracing be... there's there's no lumen there's no nanite oh, you can do a good looking game without Unreal tracing. Engine 5 can't you yeah, take, keep your ray tracing. Even Mike Yabara, you know, the, himself, who could probably afford to have one of the fucking best PCs going, even he came out saying, you know, just get rid of ray tracing. It's too, it's too heavy. Like, it's he's too heavy. He's a bit until feisty at the perfect, moment, isn't he? He is firing on all cylinders. Like, <laughs> and he, uh, he said, you know, just get rid of it. Until you can create it in a way that it's a lot more gpu friendly and a lot less tanky um screen space reflections are, are beautiful you know if Blah, done right. i vomit no i'm with replicant i'm a ray tracing stan as well 
keep delivering that. Yeah, but you and you and Replicant are like high end users. You know, as peasants, you know, you got to think of us. But anyway, um, yeah, they could drop a lot of that gear out, but I don't know what the North Light engine with Alan White too, because some of the lighting and uh, the effects in that game are sick. You know, and if you said take that out, the, the creative would lose their atmosphere they're creating. Do you get me? So it's like yeah. we can sit here and go from our perspective, 60 FPS, take away tools from them, but then they won't be able to create the worlds they want you to visit, you know, so it's, it's you know, it's catch 22. The best catch. Let's have, if there are any more questions, the next one, please. Second Capcom updated Dragon's Dogma 2, so you could turn ray tracing off on console. It got so much better. Tom, I've heard that's not true. And I don't mean to call you up on it. I'll take your word on it. But I heard that if you turn ray tracing off on Dragon's Dogma 2 on the console, you still hit the same kind of lows on performance. So it didn't actually make a very big difference there. Depending on, like, obviously that game is known to be CPU constrained. Um, so I guess it depends whereabouts you are in the world. Maybe it makes a big difference in some places and not so much in the real bottlenecked areas. But, um, Chronic, why doesn't your wife use one of your many PCs instead of the old Xbox? Hmm. I hope she hasn't heard you, Chronic. Don't get me in trouble. These are my things. My things. She does. I let her use things. She can even use the Series X if she prefers to, but she's just playing a bit of Power World in her free time, right? Um, we actually use, she's got GeForce Now as well, so a lot of the games that she plays are on there. Um, yeah, she's content. She doesn't see the frame, rate, the frame rate in the same way that I do. I think she's content. But now? She's not, she's not saying anything, so... Yeah, I think she's all right. Um, let's have the next one, please. I do actually use Chronic. All the PCs that I have, I do actually use as well. When I'm streaming, I've got a box that does that. My second PC is my stream. Beast of a stream machine. Maestro 001. Mistro, Maestro, Maestro. It's one of them words. Um, do you feel that developers are sick of people telling them how they should make their game, especially since the minority... They're the ones often heard because they are the loudest. Mr. I'm sick of people telling developers how to make their games. Developers themselves, my goodness, I feel sorry for them if they are consuming any feedback. It's even, the, the thing is, like, even good feedback is not good feedback necessarily. Um, there's a lot to be said for being able to take feedback and not take it literally, not take it at face value, but actually understand where it's coming from in a more profound way. And if you are capable of doing that, which some people are and some people aren't, but if you are capable of like seeing someone say, this is my problem and understanding that the direct solution is probably not the correct solution, but actually understanding what fundamentally might make that person happier without ruining everything else within the game, by all means, take feedback, listen to it, deal with it. Um, but if you take it all at face value and you implement things that people ask for, you're probably going to end up with a terrible game. That's the best case scenario. That's the nice kind of feedback from sensible civil people. If you're talking about the army of dickheads that are just getting upset by every little thing for absurd reasons and wild conspiracies, no developer should have that inflicted on them. No, no human being should have to listen to that tripe. Um, so yeah, I imagine they're very sick of it. What about you, Dodge? I just said it. I just said it a minute ago. Like I, um, at the end of the day, like whether we like it or not, these creatives are creating the worlds. You know what I mean? It's their visions. Yeah, and we're just playing them. You know what I mean? If you start taking things away from them, you know, then uh, you know. Listen, you know, if the coalition come out and said UE five is a hog we want to give you everything yeah but we're only going to give you 30 and then they go no no, no it's got to be 60 yeah so take away you know the high quality textures take away the this that and the other and then when a game comes out they go fucking hell that ain't gears you know what i'm saying so i understand it yeah do you know what i mean and at the end of the day the uh the creatives they're the ones building the worlds that we love and enjoy you know what I mean? So, like you say about dickheads and that who are over-opinionated and fucking this, that and the other, uh, they don't matter. Do you know what I mean? Because they're, they're not really interested like in the uh, in the developers themselves and the world that they create because they're only worried about themselves, you know? 
I that's you. what I think. I'm sure there'll be a meme of me on Twitter in a minute. Thank you, Darge. If anyone wants to make a meme of Darge, please do that. Do we have any more questions? Sometimes people have good ideas that developers end up using, but often that isn't the case. Yeah, like like I say, even the well-intentioned people giving good, honest feedback to try and make a game better, you can't necessarily just directly implement it. And that's not to say that those people are lying or not understanding things, but developers need to execute on what like the game they're trying to make, all of their vision and all the rest of it. Um, we ran out of questions, which is perfect because it is getting late, so it's bedtime for you, Dodge. But before you go... Can you let everyone know what you're up to this week, where they can find you, all of the usual good stuff? Yeah, yeah, sorry about yesterday, mate. And uh, I'm glad we got something out in the end. I, um, yeah, I'll be finishing Horizon Zero Dawn before our next show. Fucking should do, anyway. Um, yeah, so I should have that day. Probably put a little bit more Final Fantasy XIV in. Um, hell divers you know like the community you know the stuff comes up all the time like where we could end up jumping into saying i mean obviously you've got your thing on sunday as well the community game i'm sure we'll i might be about to jump in that so yeah just more gaming mate nothing else exciting going on um <clears throat> can find me um on twitter at Daj night and uh you can find me in the Discord community, which like all of you, like all the people in the chat, I see, I'm watching the chat go, and I love every one of you being here, even if we're mucking about, disagreeing, and, and things like that, like a little bit of nipple flicking, you know, like they're just messing around. Like I appreciate people coming here, listening to us, having a chat, and I, I would strongly advise you to maybe come into the Discord because everyone who comes in there, there aren't many people leaving, you know what I mean? So. It's a good place if you want a, a safe space away from the fucking noise of um, certain parts of YouTube and Twitter. Uh, that's where you want to be. But uh, yeah, thanks again, Asa, as always, mate. And uh, I'll leave it there. Thanks. Perfect. Um, I'm also, I never actually say this, but you can find me on Twitter as well and every other platform, Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, all the rest of it. I try and use Game On, Space, Acer on all of those platforms. So nice and easy to find everywhere you go. Only exceptions are if the platform doesn't let you have a space, then it becomes Game On underscore Acer. And if the platform is 30 years behind the times, it becomes a series of about 16 random digits. Sorry, I don't know what my Nintendo friend code thing is, but besides that, everywhere else, I am Game On Acer. Find me there, find me here and on the Discord tomorrow as the Xbox Series podcast with Gamsey and Deadly Headley. Sunday is going to have community games. Tony says that you can't find me in VR, but Tony, I've made a very strong demand that everyone in the VR space on our gaming arcade community gets themselves on Among Us VR in the near future because... I fancy playing it and you must play it with me for now thank you everyone for coming along that is always 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 appreciated so so grateful that you do come and support this stuff and we will catch you next time Traitors.